Are you the ultimate Orcana collector? Are you tired of just looking at your cards, sitting in your binder? Do you really know whether they're in near mint condition, played condition, whatever? Well, what if we, I could tell you there was a way just to eliminate all those questions? Well, the popular thing to do nowadays is to get your cards graded. And a lot of people in Marcotta have already done it, and I think it's a trend that's going to continue. But the question is, what does it really do for you? And should you do it as a player or as a collector? So why should you get your cards graded? Well, I think the big thing is there's sentimental sentimentality with the cards. Like you have an attachment to them and you want to you want to display and look at the the absolute best condition card that you possibly can get. That's a 10 out of 10 on all these different grading scales. I think for a collector, this is what's important. As a player, I see absolutely no reason you'd ever get your cards graded. Um, most of this video is going to talk about whether or not there's a price increase or whether or not like you should look at this as a long-term investment. And in my opinion, you really should. So I think you should be looking at these, your Arcana cards that are graded as art pieces. You really love the art. You really love the character. You really love the game itself. And you want to show off that, that you have the ultimate version of the card. Um, getting a card graded and get, having it, you know, get a high score, of course, um, it's proof of authenticity of the card and the condition. Uh, there are multiple things that the grading system uses to, to grade the cards. Um, I, I flash them on the screen real quick, but I'll come back to it real quick. Uh, as you can see, it's their centering, the edges of the card, the corners of the card, and the surface of the card. A lot of these things you don't even have control over. They happen just at the factory. But by getting a card that's graded 10, 9.5 out of 10, 10 out of 10, what you're basically saying is that this is the ultimate version of that card and you own it. Um, there aren't that many of them that are out there. Um, that's the scarcity that comes with it. Uh, you know, that there just simply aren't that many 10 out of 10s out there that have been graded because grading a card isn't free. Uh, the cheapest price I could find online was somewhere between, you know, $15 if you have a subscription to certain services all the way up to like $100, et cetera. So it's not a cheap thing that you that you go about doing to get a card graded. So you have a good inkling up front that, the card you're, you're, you're taking to get graded is going to get that high rating. And the real question I think we have to ask ourselves is, are you actually increasing the value of these cards uh, by getting them graded? And, and what is that value? And is it worth your time and effort in order to do it? How is the Larkana market affecting the graded market? And, you know, and so on and so forth, back and forth between these two uh, types of cards, a regular type of a card or, or, a, or a graded card. The first question I do want to ask you, though, as viewers are, do you own graded cards? Do you care? Obviously, you're not going to play with these because once they're slabbed up, as they say, put in the hard plastic, you're basically not going to be using them anymore. So why do you why do you own them? Um, is it just collector value? Do you just like looking at them? Do you want to? I saw a cool like poster of them all for all the enchanteds, et cetera. So let me know in the comments below why you uh, why if you do own graded cards, why you like them. And if you don't, I want to know why you don't like them also, because I'm kind of ambiguous one way or the other. I think they're great for collectors. Obviously, as a player, uh, they have very little value to me. But as a collector, I think they're important. And I do want to say up front, if you're not a fan of Elsa's Spirit of Winter and this art, um, you might want to turn off the video now because you're going to see her a lot because she is the chase card of Chapter 1. Uh, what's considered a high grade value? Well, as you can see on the screen here, there are... These are all the 10 out of 10s that I could find that were sold on eBay since the beginning of October. So what you see here is there was only 12 PSA graded 10s Elsa Spirit of Winners that are sold on eBay since October 10th. Um, there were four of non-PSA. PSA is typically like the most common one. I don't really want to, I don't want to say which one's better, which one's worse, et cetera. Um, I just happen to notice Beckett, PSA, CGC, couple companies that are out there that are also grading cards. I don't know the price difference. I don't know the, 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 you know, any difference about it other than I know PSA is pretty much like the standard that everyone uses. And then, and then there's these other companies that have come into it as well. Um, so since the beginning of October, only 12 PSA graded 10 Elsa Spirit of Winter Enchanteds have sold on eBay and four non PSA uh, Elsa Spirit of Winners have sold. So that's only 16 total Enchanted Elsas that scored a 10 out of 10 on any grading system have sold uh, since October 10th. And what you can see on here, and we're going to go over in a second, is the prices obviously were much higher at the beginning of October than they are now. The latest one that sold sold on December 21st, uh, and that it sold for $1,075, but there was one that sold 
a day earlier for 960. Um, those are mostly all on auctions. The last buy it now one was out there for 1180. So if you didn't want to play around with the auction, obviously that's out there. The other thing I did want to, want to mention is I, I do believe in general, even though there are a few of these, and during my research, I, I didn't even know you could actually sell uh, graded cards on TCG Player, but you can put up pictures of your own graded cards on there. Um, I do believe eBay is the best, best place you can currently go to find graded cards. Um, again, please, in the comments below, if this is more of your your style of how you how you collect cards, please leave a comment below uh, as to you know what other uh, areas that other collectors can find these cards uh, that you feel might be better than eBay. Because for me personally, that's that's where I like to go. Uh, but there might be better places to go where you can get better deals. I would not suggest getting these cards off somebody like Facebook Marketplace or something like that because you just don't – you're just spending a lot of money, and I, it's not something I would trust um, unless I was doing it, you know, one, you know, face-to-face. But you know, from an internet site perspective, I think eBay is the best. So let's take a look at what these prices are because I think, I think a big misconception is that grading a card – automatically, you know, keeps its value at an extremely high level for all period of time. And I want to let you know that's simply not the case. So on the left-hand side, what you see is the chart of literally the liter the, the normal Elsa Spirit of Winter uh, Enchanted. Uh, obviously, at the beginning of 90 days ago, three months ago, it was way higher, you know, $800. It peaked around close to a thousand uh, market price. And now you can pretty much get them for $350. 360, 375. So you're talking about literally taking almost a third of its price now than where it used to be. As you can see, the market price up there now is around 345. On the on the right hand side is the PSA 10 Elsas uh, on eBay. Now, obviously, um, in the beginning, the, the eBay chart goes out a little bit further, but the beginning, the, the end of September, there really were none available. The first one to basically sold because, you know, Cards had to be out in the marketplace. It, it takes time to come back from the greater, et cetera. Um, so the first one sold for over like $1,350, let's say, to $1,400, close to $1,500 in the beginning. And now, as we showed you earlier, you can generally get them for 1000 So they have taken a tumble basically from around $1,500 to 1000 um, Not quite as steep as if you owned it the whole time compared to a regular one. But what you can basically see is right now the price is about a three times the price of an enchanted normal spirit of winter. If you had a, a PSA 10 graded one, but the one thing to note is you st both charts are still going down. Like the overall slope of the chart on the right is still going down, which means as the price of the enchanted Elsa also goes down. So does the price of the, uh, so does the price of a PSA 10 because there's simply more of them that are out there. Um, and with the way that prices are going down in general uh, for the for cards, as there's more and more supply, you can easily go to your big box stores and find packs of Chapter 1 pretty much any time during the week. Um, they sit there on the shelves, which I think is a good thing, by the way. I, I'm not talking about that in this video, but I do think it's a good thing for the game in general. But there simply just are going to be more enchanteds that are out there. So you, just keep that in mind. Falling singles prices means falling prices for uh, for graded cards as well. And again, the price is consistently right around three times uh, the normal enchanted price. And as more printings of chapter one and other sets continue, the graded price will just continue to fall as well. As you know, the, a big part of why we have, uh, we cover finance on the Forbidden Mountain is because we have a TCG player pro store. You can see, uh, you know, up here, the, uh, you can click on the QR code that'll take you straight to our store. The best way you can support this channel besides, you know, obviously smash that like button, smash that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed for both Finance of Larkana and uh, weekly meta reports, weekly uh, strategy reports, etc. Um, those are the easiest ways you can, you can you can support the channel. But if you want another way to support the channel that will not cost you a dime, if you're looking to pick up any Larkana singles, please Pick them up from our pro store. We are obviously part of the TCG player marketplace. You can find our store when you go look up a card. We're obviously mixed in with everybody else in the marketplace. But if you buy from the store, the prices are literally exactly the same. It only helps us out um, because, you know, selling directly to the to you guys through the player, the pro player store saves us on fees, um, so saves us on some of the shipping, et cetera. And it literally costs you no money. So if you are looking to pick up singles from us at all, or just in general, please, uh, come straight to our TCG player store. Use that QR code right there. We'd really appreciate it.
you still want to get your cards graded, right? You're still a heavy collector. Which cards should you actually get graded? We've already established that realistically, the price of all the PSA 10 graded card changes in relation to the price of the underlying card. So as again, as prices start to go down, the price of PSA 10 graded cards will go down as well. So that's 100% affected by supply and demand. There will be more supply of Chapter 1, more supply of Rise of the Floodborne, sure, way more supply of Into the Inklands as even as soon as it drops, for example. So which cards should you actually get graded? Well, if it was up to me, there's only actually two current types of cards that I would get graded and a third one that we hopefully will see in the future. The first cards that you should absolutely get graded, and I personally would not even buy these if they were not graded, um, if you had to ask me, are the D23 cards. Um, these are cards that are obviously never going to be reprinted. They're the holy grail of uh, of Lorcana cards. You're never going to use them, etc. This is both the set of six of them, as you can see on the right, and uh, the BLT Mickeys. They're there are a good amount of BLT Mickeys that are out there that are PSA 10, which is, you know, kind of surprising to me considering that, um, you know, you, you basically just got them from the convention. It was a lot harder to keep them in pristine condition, especially when a lot of players out there didn't know they existed. But what you can see from some of the recent sales listings on the, on the left-hand side off eBay, um, and we can zoom in, uh, you know, if you need to, there's really only been one PSA 10 that sold uh, in the month of December, and that's over $3,100. For a PSA 10 uh, BLT Mickey, because there simply just aren't as many of them out there. A lot of them come back, uh, what I've noticed, graded nine. You're lucky if you get nine and a half, et cetera. So to find a PSA 10 Mickey is a truly, is a true collector's item uh, and something that I'd be looking uh, to pick up. The one thing I do want to say, obviously, about the D23 cards is you can no longer get them in a raw condition. So this is not the type of card that you're really looking to buy and then get graded. You're looking to buy them already graded. Um, and doing my research, I did find the collection on the right-hand side, which is actually um, extremely impressive to me. This is an all PSA 10 graded D23 set. Every single one of the six cards, the Maleficent Monsters Dragon, the Elsa Snow Queen, the Robin Hood, the, the Captain Hook Forceful Duelist, the, the Stitch Rockstar, and the Corella DeVille, all came back from PSA rank 10. So how much do you think this is currently selling for on eBay? Before you look it up uh, and before I tell you uh, at the end of the video, just put, put your guess out there as to how much you actually think this set is selling for. And I can tell you right away, right now, it's more impressive than you think. The other types of cards that I would look to get graded is rare cards that will not be reprinted. So... The ones on the screen that you see right here are currently convention exclusives. The only one on there that I literally do not know whether or not it was only at one convention is the Gaston. I think it might have been given out at multiple conventions only in Europe currently, however. And I know that the Rapunzel, the Pinocchio, and the Four Dozen Eggs, as it stands right now, we're only giving out at PAX Unplugged, but they've said that they're going to be given out at other Robinsburger attended conventions that happen uh, during the rise of the Floodborne metagame. But let's be honest, that metagame changes in the middle to end of February. I believe it's like February 21st or 24th, whatever that Friday, that's when Into the Ink Lance comes out. So if Robinsburger isn't scheduled to go to another convention to, to, to give these out in any way, shape, or form over the next month and a half, they'll be convention exclusives to PAX Unplugged. So either way, the point is there's less of these that are out there. If you look on the left-hand side, you'll see... Uh, a BL, uh, a Mickey, all, all the bodyguard cards. So you have your Mickey bodyguard that was given out exclusively at Gen Con, the goofy bodyguard that was given out at Gamescon, I believe. Uh, it was in France, I believe. It might have been in Germany. And the Donald Duck that was given out at Spiel. These were convention exclusives. So literally no other way to get them other than going to those conventions or obviously buying off a secondary dealer. So to me, these will never be reprinted again with that symbol at the bottom, that promo symbol. So if you wanted to get these graded, like these, there's a couple of these are PSA 10s that are up here. I see nothing wrong with that because there's no other way to get them. Um, again, you may own them. I still have a bunch of Mickeys from, from, from Gen Con, for example. So this may be something that you can still send off to get graded. You can still buy these in raw condition. You can get the Donald and the, and the Goofy and at times even the Mickey for under a hundred dollars right now. So if you were if you were to send 
pristine copies off to PSA or any one of the grading companies, and it came back a 10, I think that's a good use uh, of getting your cards graded. The same thing on the right-hand side. Um, I haven't seen um, the Gastons, a lot of them that are out there. Um, they actually seem like they're higher price, for example, than than even the Mickeys, the Goofies, or the Donalds, which is kind of surprising to me. Maybe it's because it's a more playable card, uh, et cetera. And again, the three cards on the right, the 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 Rise of the Floodborne promo cards, as it stands right now, have only been given out at PAX Unplugged. And I'm not sure whether or not there's actually going to be an opportunity to, to get them at any other convention, because I'm not positive that they're actually going to be in, at any other convention at all uh, from a Robinsburger standpoint. The last thing that you, you need to be aware of is with the organized play announcement that's going to be happening in January, it's my opinion that the easiest thing for Robinsburg to do is to give out some type of organized play event cards that happen. This happens in a lot of different games that are out there. So if they start to give away, you know, as prizes or just attending some of these larger organized play events, those are also going to be rare cards uh, and things that you should be looking to get graded. The last category that I didn't put on here, because we pretty much talked about it the, the whole entire video is the enchanted cards. Again, enchanted cards, yes, they're worth more than normal cards. Our foil cards are worth more than normal cards. And then all the way down to normal cards. They, they, they have a perceived rarity, but in reality, given the amount of supply that's going to be out there of this game from a first chapter perspective until now, honestly, I would not I, I would not get those cards graded. If you want them as collector's items, feel free. Um, I would only I would send in raw raw cards, get them graded. If they come back as tens, good on you. You were going to keep them anyway. Now you just keep them in those slabs and you can just, you know hang them up in your mantle again as to me they're more like art pieces than they are like cards uh but to me the the price is only going to go down as, as time goes on so if you are looking to pick those up to me it, it depends on when you want to strike while the iron's hot but i don't see um them as investment vehicles uh, i don't see the enchanteds as investment vehicles uh, i look at them only as as collector's items and art pieces so keep that in mind uh when you want to decide how you want to treat graded cards. If you made it this far in the video, you haven't hit that like button, uh, please smash that like button. You'll see more finance videos uh, from the Forbidden Mountain. If you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And please leave in the comments below if there's any other finance topics you want me to cover. Um, as it stands right now, uh, we're getting are already getting ready for uh, the third set to release. And th the rest of the market has pretty much hit equilibrium. So supply and demand has pretty much leveled out. You can find cards anywhere you want. So if you have any questions about buying or selling or kind of cards uh, and how we how we handle our business, please leave, leave those questions below. I'm, I'm sure to cover those in a uh, further video for you if you're looking for that. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your holiday season. Have a good night.